Seismic reflection is the best way of getting images of the subsurface. This is true for imaging sedimentary rocks in their basins, but it's also true for understanding the deep geology of the continental crust and upper mantle. Here we're going to look at how we can build an interpretation strategy for understanding crustal structure as imaged on deep seismic reflection profiles. Deep seismic profiles are in principle no different for those used to image the uppermost crust in sedimentary basins, although there are differences in the way in which the data may be acquired to bring out the low frequency signals that are characteristic of the deeper earth. So we're going to look at this image here, which is the Winch 1 profile from the Burps dataset. It's a classic profile that was recorded for 15 seconds, that should therefore image the whole of the continental crust. So let's go about building an interpretation. And the first thing to do is to create a simplification of this image. It's pretty noisy. So we do this by tracing out the most prominent reflectors with lines and we'll try and ignore multiples and diffractions although in this image there are very few. So here's a line tracing of the prominent reflectors. And let's just fade out the seismic a little bit so we can see these picks more clearly. So our interpretation will build on the line drawing. So what can we see? Well the first thing to pick if we're interested in crustal structure is the base of the crust. So where's the moho? Well, we need to have some expectation of where it's going to be. So let's imagine that the crust should have its normal sort of thickness, so around 30 kilometers. So where's 30 kilometers in this image when the vertical scale is in two-way time? Well, to answer that question, we have to have some idea of the seismic velocity. Well, typical seismic velocities for continental crust will be in excess of six kilometers a second. Well, we'll just use that six kilometers a second, the value for sort of granitic type of crust. So, in other words, 30 kilometers down equates to 10 seconds two-way time. So if we look in that sort of area in here, we can see that the base of all that reflectivity that's sub-horizontal in here is just a little bit above 10 seconds. So I'm going to pick the moho through here. In other words, the crust is slightly thinner, probably, than 30 kilometers. I pick the moho here as the seismic character changes on either side. Above the moho, we've got all those reflectors. Below, we've got very few reflectors. So the moho I'm picking at the base of the reflective, therefore lower, crust. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to structures within the crust, and particularly the upper crustal structure. And we'll start here and try and move down. Well, the shallow part of the section has some pretty prominent reflectors, and we assume these are representing sedimentary rocks. So these are stratal reflectors. So let's just work out a way of interpreting these relationships. We can see that the stratal reflectors in here are patchy. There's a horizontal sequence at the surface, which presumably represent relatively young rocks that are very little tilted. And as we go down, the rocks become progressively more tilted, but those tilted patches are that, patches that terminate down dip, like this. So how do we interpret this sort of relationship. These terminations seem to occur towards areas with very few continuous reflectors. So I'm going to assume that those areas there with few continuous reflectors are not sedimentary rocks. In other words, they're the crystalline basement. Therefore, the sedimentary rocks are but against the crystalline basement, against a steep structure, which we're going to say is a fault. So sediments are in a half graben and the basement has no strong reflective layering, we can interpret the sensor movement on the fault like this. Well, let's take this interpretation strategy and apply it back to our line drawing. There's our sedimentary rocks in here. There's a prominent patch there on the left-hand side and a small piece over on the right. Both of these packages seem to terminate down dip to the left into stuff that we assume is basement. So we can pick the edge of the sedimentary rocks like that, and these are normal faults, down thrown towards the right, which in this particular context is down towards the east. And I extended the main fault that's in our image 
down beneath the half Raven and down towards the Mohawk, tracking the edge of some reflectivity in what would then be the continental crust. Well, if we trace the fault down, it seems to merge into the reflective lower crust. So maybe that reflectivity in the lower crust represents strain, which is accommodating the crustal extension, which in the upper crust is accommodated by faulting. So perhaps we have a crustal interpretation like this, with faulting in the upper crust going down to distributed stretching in the deeper crust. Now let's turn our attention to the deeper parts of the profile. What about these sub-moho reflectors? Presumably these are in the mantle. Interpreting these is pretty tricky. This could be due to aligned minerals, or probably more plausibly, these mantle reflectors represent compositional variations within the mantle. What these compositional variations might be is a matter of significant debate still. Nevertheless, we can still map out these mantle reflectors. The lower ones are a little discontinuous, but the top one is a really important seismic event that's been named the Flannan reflector. So let's put all this information together. We have the Flannan reflector that we've seen in the upper mantle. We have a continuous moho that we can pick along the base of the reflective deep or lower crust. There are sedimentary basins in the shallow that's abandoned by normal faults, and these faults apparently tap down towards the reflective deep crust. These basin bounding faults can be mapped regionally, and they've been given names. The Outer Ars fault, which is the main one in this image, and on the right, the Minch fault. The upper continental crust, or these large parts of it, is weakly reflective. So here's our more complete interpretation. And we're suggesting that the faults in the upper crust tap down into distributed stretching in the deeper crust. How this relates to the flannel reflector uh, is open to debate. So there's a strategy for interpreting this seismic profile, the Winch 1 line from northern Scotland. We built a line drawing and we used that to build our geological understanding. And in building our geological interpretation, we should try and use as many tectonic ideas as we can to create a coherent geological explanation for the patterns of reflectors that we've imaged in the subsurface. You can see this image and many others like it on the Virtual Seismic Atlas.